Hi, my name is Brian Kugelman, and in this class, I'm going to take you through a number of key lessons on applying concepts from psychology and neuroscience to conversion rate optimization. Now, I'm going to start off by just introducing you to myself, and then I'm going to give you an overview of the course. Let me tell you a bit about myself so you know who this guy is who's going to be teaching you. My name is Brian Kugelman, and I started working in digital psychology somewhere around the year 1997 when I had my first job as a social change campaigner and I started building websites in those days. Um, you know, since that time I've had the job webmaster, which is a bit of a dated term. Um, if you had that title ever in your career, you know that that means you're a jack of all trades. You basically had to do everything right from the early days. Um, and if you haven't, and you haven't met uh, too many people who, uh, you know, are proud owners of the term um, webmaster, um, uh, let me tell you a little bit about what it means to be a webmaster from the early days. So it meant you did everything. So you used to do copy, uh, you would do programming, database design, uh, co content development, content strategy, data mining, digital marketing, basically everything. There's a point where I started applying behavioral science to digital media. And that's when I was working in 1997 as a behavior change specialist using online communication. In those days for me it was more about social mobilization, social transformation. Um, had less to do with the UI but more the broader impacts of the technology. And soon after I started working for the United Nations running global social change campaigns, working everywhere from global level change to what happens on the screen to get someone to do something. So whether it's macro or to the micro aspects of behavioral science, I've been doing this for well over 20 years. Um, at some point I got bored and I did a PhD on the subject and I want to understand what were the factors that actually work in behavior change. And I don't mean you know, the, the hyped up factors or just grabbing a social psych or psychology textbook and saying, hey, there it is online. I mean, actually finding out what has been scientifically proven to work online specifically through the highest quality standards of science that we have, so looking at randomized controlled trials um, in the digital realm, and learning how to use this and apply it to tech. Uh, so I've been spending the last um, eight years or so working in applied behavioral science, teaching people how to do it, running campaigns, building technologies, and in this course, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take you through the key lessons that I've learned over the years. I'll distill a lot of the science and I'll make it very accessible and straightforward. So let me start off by going over the agenda. We'll start off with an overview of how psychology operates in media. And based on that, I'm going to take you through the approach that we're using in this course. Then we'll get into the course by looking at outcomes. So what are the main target outcomes that you want to achieve with your digital products, with your marketing, with your advertising? We'll look at the emotions that motivate people to act that we use to help us achieve those outcomes. And I'll take you through an example from Netflix where we'll do a teardown based on the emotions that drive behavior. We'll then go deeper into the way that behavioral science and behavior change strategies play out in different media. People interact with our digital products and our marketing funnels similar to how they interact with actual physical places. So we'll take a look at how we build digital products based on spatial metaphors. And then we'll look at the locators and facilitators, which are basically signposting and wayfinding that we use to build very intuitive products. Now, based on all of this, we'll then go into the behavioral UI section. And this is where we'll go through the main psychological strategies that come down to very implementable UI that you can pull out and put into your campaigns. After, we'll look at how we take those concepts and we integrate them into different processes that we'll use to build products or take our users through different journeys. And finally, we'll end off with a bit of a general discussion about how we take psychology and embed it into different marketing campaigns or digital products. In this lesson, I'm going to go through psychology in media. And what I'm going to do is give you a quick overview of what the topic is and help you to conceptualize it in very simple and down-to-earth terms. So I'll start off with a couple examples. So here we have a few behavior change technologies, simple landing pages. So uh, here on the left, we have this one example of a website that clearly has credibility problems. So they're trying to get people to sign up to you know, complete surveys and they're going to pay people money. So you would think, okay, is money not enough of a motivator? Clearly not. 
because they're trying fairly hard to establish that they're credible. They're you know, showing how much money they've paid out and they're using trust certification. So it makes me suspicious that you know, money is not enough in this case and that they really had to do a patch up on one of the core areas uh, where you can have very big problems with conversion and that's distrust because trust does not drive behavior but rather distrust stops it. So clearly they're doing a patch up job. Now here we have a landing page for a nonprofit in the middle with our guilt baby looking at you to bring you in. Um, you know, that's a nice tactical element on the choice of photo, but if you read into the content, you'll see that they're also having problems. So I suspect they're also dealing with distrust issues because they have to describe where the money is going. So if you donate to this cause, a lot of people are sometimes suspicious that the money is going to go to the bureaucracy and not to the application. And so for conversion design in the nonprofit sector, you know, they're dealing with very different types of fears and concerns than those in the commercial sector. And so they go in and they try to alleviate uh, some of those concerns that the audience might have. And here on the right, we have your classic uh, landing page for a dating site. And, you know, you just give it a little extra, you know, tweak by making that person look towards the form. And they do a number of like other little techniques in there to boost the odds. So, um, there's not like massive, massive change factors and strategies and that, but, but just a couple of little techniques that they're throwing on. Sometimes the application of behavioral science to interactive tech is just about throwing in a couple of extra ingredients that give something an extra edge. So what does it mean to apply psychology in interactive media? It's actually a pretty simple concept. And here's the best way of looking at it. So, Simply, we're taking an influence technique and we're taking media and we're combining the two. And that's really it. So we could take any influence technique. You know, it doesn't have to be formal behavioral science. So people work in education who are very good as teachers, you know, they learn what it takes to get students to learn, right? And of course, you can learn a lot of techniques in education. It takes a lot of experience. Uh, and there's a lot of strategy. And the more insight you have into how people think and how they uh, absorb information, the better you'll get at it. So there's quite a lot of psychology that goes into education. Uh, advocacy work, so trying to change like policies and laws and trying to get organizations to change what they do. Any sort of, you know, persuasion techniques, coaching, selling, you know, you name it. It's like there's so many approaches to behavior change and we have so many different terms for them. But at the end of the day, there's some psychological ingredient that people have figured out often through pure brute force or trial and error. Now you take any of those techniques and you can apply it in any media. So I can educate people in websites, on apps, in online ads, you know, with wearable. I could use anything. I could educate people with a graffiti if I like. Um, you know, if people understood uh, drumming, I could do that. There are ancient uh, drumming communication networks and I used to be a drummer, so I'm sure I could, you know, find my way to communicate uh, through like uh, mass communication networks of drumming if that's what it takes for mass communication and there were old uh, historical techniques for that. Ancient flag uh, waving. Uh, almost everything I'm teaching today uh, I'll be going through with you. I could possibly teach a lot of it through the telegraph if I really wanted to. So the medium is not really all that important. And though this is a class largely focused on digital tech, the most important lesson is that you actually don't really get too obsessed with the digital tech because what happens is when you get too tactical with the type of knowledge, uh, you can lock in on details that don't really translate from application to application. And that's what happens when people have entirely tactical how-to knowledge. And you'll know you've reached that point when you're working with people who say, uh, <laughs> just follow us. That's what we do. This is how we've always done it here. This is what works. And you ask them, but why? And they cannot explain because they have the highly tactical knowledge about what works in the specific media and the specific audience. So I'm a bit more generic. So we'll be looking at generic influence techniques and strategies and applying them to interactive media. And I'll get into the level of um, detail that we're getting to in just a moment.
If we have an influence technique, which is largely going to be based on some psychology and human insight, and we have different media, well, how do we take that insight and apply it to media? So here are a number of ways we can do it. So first, we can take the digital strategy. So sometimes the psychology comes into broader strategy, and you can't really pinpoint it on the screen. You can't say, here's that strategy. So say a foot in the door technique that maybe has you know, got you to do something small at one point in this process and then later on they ask for something bigger and bigger. Um, yeah, you can sort of pinpoint it in a complex system, but there could have been some face-to-face -face interaction or maybe an upsell earlier on. And, you know, it's not as easy to pull out. Uh, and sometimes it's a lot more subtle. And so things that manifest in strategy are not always as easy to pick out, but, but they shape how you approach things. And the whole a frame of reference that you take towards technology. We can go into structures and layouts. So this is where it goes more into like the overall navigational systems and overall approach that we take the technology. Now for process control, uh, often the psychology will come in where we're like thinking about different strategies that we're gonna use at different times. Content is full of psychology. So people who work in editorial strategy uh, some of them have some of the most sophisticated psychological strategies. And it's not always obvious when you read very persuasive content exactly what's going on because it tends to be so densely packed that uh, and like, you know, any one sentence could be full of numerous techniques all at the same time, all integrated. UI elements are also sort of the same way. So what happens on the page, which is a lot more tactical that you can identify, is they do tend to mix in a number of different principles. Um, and in this class, we're gonna be zeroing in a lot more on the UI components, but the ones that are more blatantly obvious psychological strategies. And of course, visual design also brings in so much. So the psychology comes in in many places. Um, in some cases, it's gonna be more abstract, impacting on more strategy. In the other cases, it'll be very tactical and you'll be able to point and say, there's principle one and there's principle two.